Now, as Kenya marks 60 years of independence from the British colony, we delve into the milestones of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, a cornerstone media house in the nation's history. Here is Marie Yambo with KBC's nostalgic journey. How has this public broadcaster evolved over the last 60 years? The history of broadcasting in Kenya can be traced back to 1928 with the establishment of the British East Africa Broadcasting Limited that aired the BBC programs targeting the European settlers. The messaging sort of admonished the African way of life while promoting the settlers' agenda. The press in those days was designed to portray um, the white people as a superior race. Starting as a TV producer in 1976, Arin Wakesi worked for the Voice of Kenya as a controller of programs radio. And of course Kenyans, were, I mean the citizens, were, were, were very alienated from it because they were not supposed to be knowing too much. During the struggle for independence, radio broadcasts played a crucial role. People were educated. People learned a lot even about politics, how to do their rights. And so in 1953, when the African Broadcasting Services KBS was established in Kenya, it played a crucial role in rallying Kenyans together. It aired news and programs in vernacular, among them, the Luo. <laughs> Kisomali. Kikamba. And also Kiswahili. And the UN Secretary General Osan has arrived. 1962, television broadcast was established in Kenya. With the transmitting station in Limuru and a single production studio at the broadcasting house in Nairobi, in black and white, and with humble equipment, it laid the foundation for what would become a vital part of Kenya's communication landscape. So now, I have much pleasure, Your Royal Highness, in asking you, you formally to, to open our, our television, television center. center. Tunakwisha shibisha masikio yetu kwa kusikia Lakini vile vile macho nayo yataka kuwa na kitu chake Na kitu cha kushibisha macho ni television Fast forward to 12th December 1963 Kenya gained independence The voice of Kenya televised the events that shaped the nation's identity One of the pioneer broadcasters, Mohamed Abdullahi, joined the then Voice of Kenya from 1966 to 1978 as a broadcaster. I also presented programs like Mambaleo, along with the Professor Ida Norbert Okare, if you have heard about those names. Among the major events he cherishes is the 1972 Olympic Games. In 1972, me and Sammy Louis covered the Olympic Games in Munich, where the Kenya team won the 4 by 40 relay, 400 relay, gold medal. Uh, this was a really big win. After almost 40 years, Zipora Simani recently retired from service at KBC as a controller programming TV. Simani graced the TV screen starting off as a news anchor in 1985. A role, she says, was not just daunting, but was closely monitored by government officials. For me, I remember one time, uh, Waruru Kanta was our minister at that time. So I would call and say, I've been watching and I have not seen an item that uh, people who are supposed to, who came and covered and have not seen on TV. And I'm I mean, we should be talking to the chief news editor. It says, it is you I am asking, until we told the MD 
that's kindly find a way and avenue of how these uh, senior people can be calling your office before they come to us. Thank you for making the Legends Edition your choice this evening. Our sign language interpreter. A computer scientist by profession, Edmund Modibo, who anchors news on KBC's Legends Edition, was ushered into broadcasting through the school's broadcast by the now Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. He acknowledges how news gathering and presentation has evolved. Audio scripts and uh, from the papers, even the auto cue came later on. The auto cue that we have that is so natural that we have now. And you had to also develop a certain skill where you'd be able to, first of all, get into understanding the content, being able to look on the script and still connect as you would in terms of reading, so that when you now read the news, you're actually able to connect with the audience. KBC was more than a news source. It was a cultural hub. From memorable, iconic TV comedy shows like Vitimbi, and Vyoja Makamani that had Kenyans glued to their TV sets. Music Time, hosted by veteran journalist Fred Obachi Machoka, was a household favorite. Until next week, same time, same place. Bye bye. Music Time made television uh, the go to uh, place. People made a date with me on a Sunday evening to be at home. Others who didn't have television that time went to social uh, halls to, to, and, and the neighbors who had TVs to just peep and see this, uh, this show which was almost like a religion. But getting the programs on air was not an easy task. Yulelia Namai was the station controller Saudi House in Mombasa from 1973 to 1978. You book a telephone to Nairobi and it does, the post, you may not even get it after six hours. So the communication itself was difficult in terms of telephone and then having programs actually sent uh, by push of service so that we show them. So Mombasa was always two, two days behind. Very exciting in its own way. In the 21st century, KBC has adopted to stay relevant in the ever-changing media landscape. KBC embraced the digital revolution. Maria Mbo reporting for KBC Channel One.